it's um, six o'clock here, and I'd like to open up this um, um, special meeting, a, a public hearing on the draft Rochester zoning bylaws for, um, this is on November 27th, 2023 at 6 p.m. here at the town office, and this has been warned properly, um, posted in three places and on the town website Correct. and emailed to interested parties. So basically, with the help of Two Rivers out of Quichi Regional Planning Commission and the, um, the Rochester Zoning um, Planning Board has been working for how long? Um, over a year, right? Yes. Just yeah, a year over now. a year yeah. mm -hmm. on tweaking the, um, the zoning bylaws so they will, um, one, conform with evolving um, state mandates and also um, tweaking them to better reflect the intentions of the, um, the members of the board in the town and um, addressing a variety of, of issues. I could um, read over. We were set to have um, Dan McKinley, who's the chair of the planning board here, to walk us through this. And I'm dragging my tongue, hoping that he will log in on Zoom because he is out of, out of town. Um, but I could um, give a little bit of the um, overview and um, this is all being done in accordance with the Vermont Municipal and Regional Planning and Development Act, here in, to be f referred to as the Act, which is 24 VSA Chapter 111. So we're not just doing this just because we're bored and looking for things to change. We're, we have been mandated to do some of this. Um, and the intent of this bylaw is to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the inhabitants to protect the value of existing property and ensure orderly growth in the town of Rochester by preventing the overcrowding of land by new development, promoting adequate sewage disposal, water supplies, transportation, schools, and other necessary town services. It's not the intent of this bylaw to supplant or replace any state or federal regulations. Any proposed development must also satisfy applicable state of Vermont regulations. Um, so, you know, wastewater and access management, et cetera. So, um, I don't know if that, I um, let Sarah could, could give us some of the highlights of the areas that were addressed. I'd be too. Um is my sound coming through okay for folks? Martha, can you hear Sarah okay? I can hear her, but I'm not sure who she is. Could could you just, is she with, with? There was She'll two introduce rivers. herself. Is, we sure. just wanted to make sure you could hear. Happy to do that. What Hi, is Martha. her title? What is she? Hi, Martha. I'm, I'm Sarah Raid. I'm a senior planner with Two Rivers Adequichi Regional Commission. Okay, thank you. Yes. So as, as Dune mentioned, um, the town contract, contracted with Two Rivers Auto Beach Regional Commission to assist with revisions to their bylaw. The town's bylaw um, had a lot of areas that needed work in order to bring it into um, agreement with what state law says a bylaw has to do and has to say. And so on, if you take a look at the bylaw and you compare it to the, um, the existing bylaw that's on the books, uh, almost every section has been um, dramatically revised just because there was a lot of stuff that was out of date and a lot of stuff that was missing that needed to be included per state law. Um, and so when you look at this draft bylaw, um, you'll see, uh, I guess, some like the high level big changes that you'll see here are that we've really uh, changed the structure of the bylaw to make it easier to navigate and read and understand. And we've also clarified uh, different kinds of uses in the town. So we've made it, we've created a separate section that clarifies which uses do not need a permit at all. They're exempt from permitting requirements in the town. Um, and then we've got within each of the districts, and by the way, the district boundaries are not changing. The only thing that changed on the map um, is the name of the business residential district, which used to be labeled as village on the, dis on the, the map, but we've changed it to business residential to uh, make sure that it's consistent with the, what the town plan calls the village area. So the, the, the map is not changed in any other way, but the, the um, descriptions of those districts, the uses that are allowed in those various districts, 
those have been tweaked by the Planning Commission after extensive work over many months talking about how they wanted to organize regulations within each of those districts. Um, and so within each district, you'll see a list of permitted uses, which means that um, a permit would be required, and it's sort of one, one process to get approval to go ahead with a certain kind of devel development in that district is permitted. Um, the other kind of process that you would take to get a permit to actually do your, do your project in that district would be under the conditional use review process. So a permitted use goes through Dune as the zoning administrator, and a conditional use goes through review by the Planning Commission. And so they've sort of spelled out which, which uses are permitted, um, which uses are prohibited entirely within a given district, um, and then anything that's not named is considered a conditional use. So we've made very clear what kinds of activities are falling under each of those categories. So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for folks who are considering a project and want to make sure, well, do I need a permit for this? And what exactly is required? Uh, hopefully it's easier to navigate the um, bylaw and figure out what you need to do and what's, what's required. Um, and then under the standards that you'll look at in the draft, we've done a lot of work to make sure that we are compliant with the latest housing legislation. As you all know, a lot of um, changes were made to state law around housing regulations at the local level last year, so we've made sure that the new bylaw, the draft bylaw, is compliant with those regulations. Um, and that has meant including, or excuse me, increasing uh, allowed density for residential units in certain areas. Um, and then we've also made sure that those uses, such as, for example, group homes and family child care facilities that are protected under state law and can only be regulated in certain ways, we've made sure it's very clear in the bylaw that, that uh, the boundaries that are set by state statute are respected under local law as well. Um, we did not make any changes to the flood hazard overlay district in the bylaw, and the reasoning for that on the part of the Planning Commission was that uh, there was a concern that you know the the flood has the the flood maps are going to be revised soon by FEMA, and so there was a concern that we might put the cart before the horse, as it were, and we're trying to we're just going to wait for a little bit, see what shakes out of the map revision process, and whatever regulatory changes come down from the state in accompanying that map revision process, and then um, the town could at a later date pick up any revisions they might want to make to the flood hazard overlay district. But as the, the standards currently stand, they are compliant with all state and federal laws. Um, so there's no concern there. Sandy, what am I missing? Would you like to chime in? Um, no, I think, you hit, I think you hit the headphones. I'm wondering if that, the phone number might be Dan. Mm -mm. No, it's not Dan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll take a pause there. I'll we'll turn it back to the select board to... I, well, I, yes, I guess I will say a couple of things. Okay. Uh, number one, um, the existing um, uh, zoning bylaw was last updated in 2009. So we felt that, that it was time to really to really do the work, the, the serious work that um, Sarah has described. And the other piece is that we recently redid the town plan about three years ago, and it's important to keep them to make sure that we are consistent. So part of Th this, this whole thing got off the ground because we wanted to make sure that, that we were um, uh, keeping the, the zoning um, in compliance with, with our vision, with our overall vision for the town, and I think we've done that. Anybody um, in the, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I'm part of the housing committee, and I think, um, I hope I wasn't too late, but we wrote to the um, zoning and to the select board um, about creating um, a neighborhood um, because the, the state incentives for housing development, um, if you're in the designated village, then you can get tax credits. And Kevin Geiger had come to a meeting and said, <coughs> and I noticed that Waitsfield had done it, if there's a designated neighborhood that's um, created mm -hmm. that's when a half a mile of the designated village right. then they would be eligible for tax credit as well and so okay. is it too late to my understanding is that those are totally separate processes they are yeah. yeah so it gets a little confusing because we're talking about district areas within the zoning and then the state's talking about district areas too but they are really um, 
that's the, the areas that the state's talking about belong solely to um, the solely to the designation process. So for example, the village designation process under the state, the state will draw a boundary around what it considers to be the village. That boundary may not line up with what your, your zoning district boundary is for your village. And that's okay, because the state has very specific rules they have to follow for a, a economic development program. Zoning is so much more than economic development, right? So when it comes time, if the town wants to pursue a neighborhood designation, um, there's nothing in this bylaw that would prohibit you from doing that, and that's a completely separate process, and you would work with the state <coughs> to figure out where exactly the appropriate boundaries for that would fall. So Kevin had said it went through the select board and the planning and zoning, but you're saying just the select board? So <coughs> Kevin's actually on the line. Kevin, do you know oh, the good. details Maybe for a neighborhood could, designation? I could have misunderstood. Uh, neighborhood designation not terribly related to your zoning. Right, and I think the question is, Kevin, the process for that neighborhood designation, does it go both through the Planning Commission and Select Board, is it, or is it just the Select Board that's leading that process? Uh, just the Select Board, I believe. You just need to have the foundational stuff in your town plan. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. So do we have that foundational stuff in our town plan, do you know? I have not looked at the That's town plan specifically like with that. reference to neighborhood That'd be the next step, yeah. And then just yeah. the, <coughs> amend the town plan to match the yeah. what you want to do, and that's what we'd have to do, that process. See if they see that. So the, um, I was on the Two Rivers website, of course, there's tons of maps there. Mm -hmm. And what they had was, it was called <coughs> the designated and I could be wrong, so please straighten me out. The designated village is done by the state, and then they had a, um, a designated town, I think if that's what it was called, map that basically was that half, half a mile radius that included all the buildings that were within walkable distance to the village. Wonderful. Right, and I was not involved in creating that map, but maybe Kevin can speak to that. Um, but my understanding is that that would just be a planning tool for the town when you're actually going to the state and you're beginning those conversations about where that boundary would fall for the neighborhood designation, and that would aid you in that process. But it doesn't actually line up with any of your zoning district boundaries, and that's okay. I have a question for Kevin. This is Robert. Yep. <clears throat> Kevin, thank you. This is Robert Franks. Good evening. Hi, Robert. Hopefully you had a happy Thanksgiving. I did. My question is, where does Two Rivers out of Quichi get their money? Is it taxpayers' money? Is it private money? What? How does it work? Okay. Um, doesn't have much to do with the hearing, but uh, I'm glad to answer it if that's okay with you all. Uh, we get our money from a variety of stuff. We get our money from the feds and from the state and from towns. Um, so it's it's kind of all over the place. About half of our budget is federal contracts of one shape or another. Well, are they are those uh, categories broken into categories so one can find out how much the feds are giving, the state's giving, or personal you know private private people are giving? Yeah, we don't really get private donations. Uh, we could, I guess. We have a 501c3 arm, but we don't really typically get private donations. But my question is, how do I find what percentages of the monies that uh, Tours Out of Quichi receives, where do I find that? Uh, you'd probably look at our annual audit, I would imagine. Good looking okay. backwards. I'm sorry, in the what? In the audit, we have a we have a full single audit each year. Oh, so I have so with regards to our conversation this evening, I have to get offline and go to the audit, go through numbers and find out how much this how much money is being spent with regards to Sarah, you know, this dissertation about uh, housing. <laughs> Um, I'm not following the logic there, Robert. Uh, it's, yeah, well, I, 
No, I heard some laughter, and that, that was from somebody. But my point is, where do I find specific information for how the employees of Tour Out of Queaches are paid and how you guys deliver monies to grants and so forth in the towns of Vermont? So if I could um, step in here, Robert, I think this, this question and these topics are are a little bit off of what our hearing is about tonight, but that I think that there's, um, it's a 501c3, and, and I would believe those records are available through, um, that you could request that information from Two Rivers and, and dig into that, but that's, um, I don't think Yeah, that's, well, there's uh, two, that's, uh, I, I requested information about Two Rivers out of Quichi two years ago, and you said the same exact thing. Well, did it's you up follow you, up and, and do your research, Robert? But um, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm trying to direct us back on to the topic at hand here. This, this is a the hearing. The topic at hand yeah. is money. Well, no, Not actually. Where it comes from. Um, Robert, um, if, you could, if you could refrain from trying to steer this in, um, in the direction that you want to talk about, I'd like to um, avoid having to meet you. So if you could um, respect the fact steering. that we're... I'm not, I, am not, well, I am not on this line to steer a meeting. I'm asking a very simple question like a fifth grader would ask. What, okay. where does the money okay. come from? You've, that's been asked and answered. It's, it's a variety of sources which Sarah just told you. So if you can, we'd like to move forward and see if anyone else has any specific questions about the, um, the updates to the, the draft of the Rochester zoning. Anyone else on Zoom? Everybody on Zoom looks to be all set. Well, I would just like to thank I have a question. Oh, Burma. there we go. Okay. Yes, Burma. Hi. Um, is there an updated uh, pamphlet or uh, something that we can put our hands on to see all the zoning areas? And is there a printed document that is available for the taxpayers of the town of Rochester to have there, in hand with these changes there, designated? There, there is. You could, you could get one in the in the town office. Also, it's, it's on. Okay, the great. It's it's also on the website too. Under documents. Under documents. Yeah. Okay. Is it color coded or is it you know is it color coded uh, in terms of map. what the changes are? Yeah, the map. You know, the map, oh, map, the map is on there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're colors. And they're colors. Right, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, we did have somebody that just joined by phone. I'm not certain um, if we want to find out who it is. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the number. Maybe that's Dan. I'm not sure. <laughs> we have a, um, a, someone calling in at 802-770. Uh, Four one seven seven. How you doing, Dan? Oh, that's Dan. <laughs> you missed all the fun. Um, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. I, um, I couldn't get into uh, the Zoom. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. Well, Sarah did um, um, a summary of um, the reason and, and the bulk of the changes, and I don't know if you had anything specific that you would like to contribute. Um, not knowing what Sarah shared, um, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't want to recap what, what right. Sarah. Well, have you got did. any questions then? Um, I do not have any questions. All right. You you, you um, stand behind and approve of of um, this draft of the zoning bylaws, then I presume. Yeah. Yeah. The. Um, uh, the Planning Commission worked diligently with Sarah, and we want to thank Sarah for, for, for her efforts on this. We couldn't have done it without her, no. or not as effectively. Yeah. And we think we have a really good uh, uh, new zoning bylaw that uh, syncs very nicely with our town plan, which is the goal we set off with. And um, we also made a lot of updates so that we're um, 
uh, with the state statutes and the sync with state statutes. And so, yeah, we're we're pleased with it, and we hope the community will be as well. All right. Uh, may I make a comment? Uh, if it's um, germane to the the topic, then, but please go ahead, Robert. Thank you, Tune. Uh, Dan is on the line. Yeah. Obviously, he wasn't on the line when Sarah was speaking. So how in, how does he make a decision to to approve what is being put forth? He was very involved with every step of the the creation and and the work on this. So he's. He's very um, aware of what we're talking about here. Well, I think Dan should have been a little bit more aware of Sarah uh, taking time to come to Rochester to discuss this information. This is also the second public meeting that where this information has been presented. So initially, the planning board present as a public hearing to present the information and then they hand it to the select board and after the proper time frame of, and warning then we present it again just to make sure that that people are aware and have the opportunity to to have their input well, that uh, was, we have a, that was well said yeah. just, just to be clear um, uh, this is a formal presentation from the planning commission to the select board and Dan did that by email about a month ago. Yep. So, so Dan's, Dan's endorsement of this project is in writing to the select board about a month ago. Yep. All right. Thank you. So that was Dan. If there's anyone else have any, any questions, comments? If not, I'm going to move to um, close this hearing. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you again, Sarah, for for all your work and everyone on the planning uh, planning board. Now I'd like to move to open this um, regular select board meeting of November six twenty two twenty seventh at six twenty two. Not that much later than we usually do which has been warned in three public places and on the website and emailed to interested parties. And going to start with the prior meeting minutes of November 13th. And they looked short and sweet. Short and sweet yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, was I, I was, good. yeah, it was a quick I'd move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And and moving on to um, our guest, Kevin Geiger is here to talk about the um, grants related to flood resilient and equitable transportation infrastructure for New Hampshire and Vermont. Um, thank you yes. for being here, Kevin. Thank you. Um, so just very briefly on that, I think I forwarded a, um, a draft letter of support, but we are going in for a grant with and under our partner agency in New Hampshire, the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission, to the U.S. Department of Transportation to um, get basically money that would fund about a half a person of capacity over three years to do transportation related things that relate to climate resilience. And, and it's kind of a, a hodgepodge of things that they can do in there the um the biggest thing the, the the shorthand way i say about this is like think about having another half of rita uh, in our office and the things that she does that, that helps towns um get and manage transportation monies this these monies are a little bit broader than the federal highway monies we get that support rita and that they are they could potentially be used to help us look at zoning and how it relates to transportation. They could, um, some energy stuff and how it relates to transportation, um, walkable communities, things that we do now, but some things that are also on the edge of what our transportation projects do right now. Um, and there is no match from the towns on these. And um, if we get the money, it would be for about three years of, of funding. Uh, but we are asking for certain town support, and the reason we are asking those certain towns is they show up 
on USDOT spreadsheets as having some type of um, either climate insecurity, transportation shortage, or as a disadvantaged uh, town. And Rochester shows up in a couple of those things that way. So that's that's my spiel on that. So basically, you're looking from the town for a, a letter of support in your grant application? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have no May I ask you a question? <coughs> Go ahead. Kevin? Go ahead, Robert. Yes. What what per, Kevin, what percentage would you like the town of Rochester uh inclusive of the federal government? What what's the number? Um I'm not what percentage of our budget? Is the no, town of Rochester? You you said that you, you're looking out to towns to uh, support the the mission. Yes. yes. What what percentage are you looking for from the town? Zero. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just just a piece of paper. Uh, I, I would um, move to sign that piece of paper and add our support. Um, I approve. I second. You second. I move. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much, Kevin. He's still there. Thank you. And yeah. and just for the curious out there, um, our if you go to our website and you go under the about. Uh, you can find our audits for the last several years and our budget, and that will give you the you know where money comes and goes. All right, great. Um, so okay, thank. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome to stay if you don't have anything more exciting to do tonight. <laughs> but, yep. Yep. Um, but speaking of money, we also have here our um, monthly budget report from the treasurer, and I would move to approve that. I reviewed it. Thank you. For putting Money that is together. moving right along. Yeah, yes. I, I second. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And um, do you want to talk more about the neighborhood designation? Sure. Yeah. So um, the housing committee was at the Harvest Fair, and we had a um, home creators brochure that outline various state incentive programs that are available for people that might want to either do an ADU or um, do something with their properties so that to create a housing or apartments. Um, and so one of the, the incentives is tax credits. And so there were a few people that live they considered that they lived in the village. And the tax credits um, through the state, it's very clear that it's, <clears throat> excuse me, the designated village. And the designated village, which is created by the state, is really tiny. Yeah. It, and doesn't even extend down South Main Street very far or North Main Street. And so there were some people that were questioning, well, you know, I. I walk to town every day, how can I not be in the designated village? And so then that whole, well, how, how do you change the designated village? And when I looked it up, the state is looking to look at designated villages for Rochester in 2026. They only do it, and maybe you can help me out, every so many years. Three years. And it has to do with business and economic things and a whole formula. Um, and there is some talk in the legislature of maybe changing that process at some point, but it's not going to happen quickly. So then when we had the meeting in um, October where we had a panel of people that had, um, were home creators, one had, was bought um, dilapidated houses basically, rehabbed them, and then they became entry level housing for families. 
Um, another one had rehabbed um, an old building um, and turned it into a, an apartment building. Um, and then the whole idea, in the meantime, I had read about Waitsfield's um, zoning planning, it was under their planning and zoning report in the paper that they had created a bunch of neighborhoods. And so that kind of intrigued me, so I looked up online. And then at that meeting in October, um, Kevin had said that if you have a designated neighborhood, then they're eligible for the tax credits as well. So the whole point is to allow people to get as many incentives as possible if they're going to do something with their property and they happen to live in the village. I mean, you can't create them, from what I understand, more than a half a mile away from the designated village. You know, you couldn't be throwing them up all over the place, but it made perfect sense to me that... And so when I was looking online, um, Two Rivers had on their site, it's called the, um, the town village. And what this map shows is basically it goes, I don't know if you guys, we had tried to get a one that would print, but what it does is it goes up Brook Street to like Diane and Dick White's mm -hmm. house up Bethel Mountain to where those three houses are together, a rug. Yeah. Um, does Wheatfield Drive and Kennedy Drive, and it goes basically down to the cemetery and then back up. And it will also include um, Riverbrook and down to the right, Yellow House, the just north of town. Mm -hmm. But it's already there, and the designated village is, is within there. Um, it it's just designated made, downtown. Yeah. 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 And then any house within that boundary would be eligible for a tax credit, which I think is helpful. That's one of the incentives. Yeah. <coughs> well, it sounds like an obvious project to take and, on. Yeah. And it's an application. It's a one-page application. Yeah. Um, and it has spaces for how many names. So what I didn't know is, could you take this map and say, OK, this is one neighborhood? Or do you have to break it out separate from the designated village and say, OK, this is a neighborhood, that's a neighborhood? Or could you just say it's all one big neighborhood? My understanding is that if it's a contiguous area, that would just be the one neighborhood. It would be the neighborhood designation area that the, that the state would outline. So you only have one village center. So presumably, you would just have one neighborhood designation okay. area that would go around the village center. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking, is that in the application form, it has, um, you have to give a map Mm -hmm. and just say that you're creating a neighborhood. Yeah, it looks like you have the map right there that would do the yeah. job. Yeah. And what are the tax credits? Are they um, property tax credits, income tax credits? Um, was so tax credit is something where you could either apply it to offset your your income taxes, or you can sell that. You mm -hmm. can sell it to a bank at a at a. They'll take okay. a percentage. And these cre tax credits are offered to individuals because I'm familiar with it with a mm -hmm. business. Yeah. So it's yeah. the yes. same concept. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's part of the new incentive programs that yeah. were created. Ongoing. Mm -hmm. Ongoing credits? I believe so, mm -hmm. but I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't know the the fine details of the whole. I know with with if you so when we had the night in in uh, October, there was a lady that had rehabbed a house, and she said that they decided not to take some of the incentives because of course there's some requirements, and so with um, the ADU requirement is you have to agree for five years to rent at an affordable low, low, rate low income, yeah. and not have it be an Airbnb. Right, mm -hmm. um, yeah, same and as the grant. Yeah. So, yeah. My, yeah. so my guess is the tax credits would have strings too, but I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So but that would be someone's choice whether or not they want to 
apply for that. But by the town applying for this neighborhood, then, then, then that at least gives the people the option, the to, option to, to apply for that. Like any um, downsides to that? Not like So the town is reimbursed by the state for those credits? No, no, it's the it's people. Individual. All the town is applying for is to create the neighborhood designation. Yeah, the the people the doing the project are the ones that would apply for those yeah. tax credits. Okay. Yeah. Benefit from it. yeah, so it's really, um, I, I couldn't see any reason not to. There's, there's not a downside to no, it. No, really. I'd, I'd um, recommend that we, we go ahead and make that application happen. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. And I, and I think that village map that, that basically outlines the, the neighborhood there. Is it, do you have any input on that, seems as we have a, an official planner here in the, in the room? So this is sort of a new process, right? So if they're still figuring things out, and it's, um, it is a little more onerous, I think, than just a one-page application. There's quite a few things you've got to make sure you're checking off on the checklist. Um, but Two Rivers is available to assist the town with that application. So you have technical assistance available to you. Um, that's just part of what we do, part of our general operations. It's not a separate contract or anything. Um, so we can walk with you through that process. Um, and then the tax credits themselves, um, I'm not familiar with what exactly that's going to look like in the NDAs. In the village centers, tax credits are really focused around businesses mm -hmm. um, and people who have any sort of commercial activity, including apartments, right, um, for rehabbing existing structures. It's really a historic preservation tax credit. But I do understand that it's, it's sort of been expanded under the new program. And as you mentioned, things are going to be changing in the years to come. We just don't know when. So the guidance we've been given from the state is if you have a town that's considering applying for a new designation, just move forward now. Don't wait, because we have no idea what the state's timeline is going to be on revisions to the program. So get going now. Are you the person to see on that, or is there a designated person? We, um, in the past, have been the designated person, but with workloads, honestly, there's, <coughs> there's so much going on. Kevin, Sydney, or I could help. Um, really, it's just when you knock mm -hmm. on our door, whoever's available will mm -hmm. okay. will get rolling with you. And we'll All right. So there's nothing to officially um, no, move and approve, but I would um, I would indicate that yes, we're we're behind that and we'll start mm -hmm. that ball rolling. Thank you for your your work on that. <coughs> okay. Um, next on the agenda, um, Tom and Nancy are here to make a request about um, some ARPA funds um, pointed at the cemetery. Cemeteries? Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> so we made a presentation probably a month or so ago at a selectman's meeting um, with real general in simple uh, projects that we feel the cemeteries are falling behind on, on deferred maintenance, and uh, we thought we needed to <clears throat> start to address some of those, and with the uh, town receiving some ARPA funds, we thought maybe we'd throw our, our name, our committee in, into the mix to, to request some money to maybe make some progress on some of those things, um, and we've discussed it. Were you here at last selectman meeting? Did you do a little bit more? No, we didn't discuss it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was away. Um, so your initial um, list of, of needs for the cemetery was pretty pretty broad and a pretty good chunk. Well, I think we had the... It was yeah, we didn't, specific. We, pretty, yeah. we didn't well, I mean, have... It was <coughs> specific and it covered a lot and it was a pretty good chunk of money. It is, right. A, we talked about money. it at budget and finance. Yeah, right. It's a chunk of money uh, when we... we probably have some priorities, um, but we we since have gotten some estimates, some quotes from various um, contractors or vendors for some of these this stuff, so we have a little bit better idea of what would we would be requesting. Um, 
is now the time just to tell you what we are requesting or how formally specific. requesting. Formally requesting, it would be a, a, a good time to submit that list, and I'm not sure if we would make a decision right at this table right now to do it. But it would having a more specific um, prices and, and you know and your priority list would be helpful, so we could you know give us some. I don't well, I think we did submit it to at least the budget committee, and these are only estimates. And certainly we can prioritize things, mm -hmm. but there are serious areas that need uh, dealing with. May I make a comment? No. <laughs> what, what's your comment, Robert? Uh, who said no? No, what's, what's your comment? My comment is I wish that Marvin Harvey was here to make the decisions and understand the budgets. But unfortunately, he's in Florida and he cannot attend. Thank you. Yep. So, um, do you have a, um, you got a printout with your, your I, priorities? <laughs> we have a handwritten printout. Handwritten Sorry. printout? Yeah, no, <laughs> a, a write out? We can read handwriting. Yeah. <clears throat> I plan on meeting with um, Larry Strauss so that we can compare notes and find out where we all stand on the ARPA funds mm -hmm. and then I can fill him in as to what may be uh, earmarked mm -hmm. right. and, uh, and then and take a look at the actual accounting of where we stand on all of yeah. So I'd like to do that. We need first. to sit down and do that at some point. Yeah, it's been okay. kind of easy to just say, oh, we'll do some ARPA funds here and some <laughs> Let's check right. the ARPA kitty. funds there, but we should right. definitely check we, it. We yeah. need to get a little bit well, we, we would just like to at least know that we could get some money <coughs> because we're falling behind faster than we're going ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> and it replaces. Do I see that, Pat? Oh, I'm I sorry. Made a bunch. Sorry. Made a bunch. sorry. I didn't give him a Take one pass and a one. Yeah, it's kind of like. Probably the biggest, uh, well, definitely the biggest uh, expense would be to improve and repair some of the road issues up there. Uh, the pavement, the old pavement is cracking up, and it's, um, and where there's no pavement, there's a lot of potholes. Um, in the uh, extension of Woodlawn Extension, um, people are cutting corners. We think we need to designate that road a little bit better. Um, they're cutting all corners onto people's burial lots. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to put a, a hardened um, two-car parking lot at Bingo entrance. That's a terrible place to, to park for folks. Um, we'd also like to mount some signs with some of our rules and regulations at the entrance of some of our cemeteries. I think that would be helpful um, for folks. We've already got um, Cody, Mc Cody McCullough uh, coming to remove some trees. We've got the go ahead to do that, and it's much less than this, although that's that's just a one-time thing for, for Cody to uh, remove the, the most dangerous dead trees around the perimeter of the cemeteries. What um, was, that? was his quotes like $2,400, Yeah, $2,500. And that's what really you're looking for right now? Yeah. I don't see any problem with that. Well, we, I think you told us that the other day, too. Yeah, but this is showing now be ongoing. On Cody. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's always a need to repair stones, especially some of our older cemeteries where their families aren't involved or around anymore. That it's, in theory, the stone repair is, is up to the family who owns a lot, but that's not going to happen in the older cemeteries where there's generations and generations ago. Um, we feel we feel we should make an effort to 
uh, respect folks and, and start to do some repair work. That's pretty expensive. We've gotten some estimates from Green Valley Memorials on some of them. Um, depending on the severity of the damage to the stone, it's only $150 per stone to 350 or more. But um, this figure we put in there, after walking around our cemeteries and, and getting an estimate of how many stones we would like to try to repair over the next several years, this certainly would be helpful. So these all add up to that 449 uh, tree removal. You can you can deduct some. Um, there's always going to be some tree removal and brush brushing back every year. So um, this is just a a snapshot in time for this ten thousand dollars. As you know that. The, the amount of money that gets budgeted is basically just to mow the seven cemeteries. Right. We, we'll just have to review the ARPA funds and see what we can come up with. That's all. That's all we can do. You probably, you probably won't get it all, but you'll get some. Well, I'd like to think that we would know what we could start planning to do next spring. We don't know until spring. we sit down and Figure that it most out. of this work could not be done at this point. You know, we'll have to yeah. we'll have to figure out where we stand. We've got one major project left that I, we need to do, and that's that wall out there. That's been on the burner for I don't know how many years. And after that, I'm not sure where the money is to go. We do need to fix the library. That doesn't sound very encouraging, Frank. I'm not trying to sound <laughs> encouraging. I'm trying to trying to tell you the truth. And we don't know what the money's going to be left after that. So, and who's going to need it next? So, we do have some promise for skate space. I'm not sure that's gone out yet. So that's been designated. I think the fire department or the is it the fire department that wants some? Everybody wants some. Everybody wants some. So we, we'll just have to figure out. And we don't know right now. I mean, we don't, just don't know. So. Where do we yeah, stand? I mean, with comment. Um, yeah, go for it, Robert. Uh, with respect to the people that are buried in the cemeteries, I'm offering free services to power wash every tombstone, whether broken or rotten or crooked or falling. I will. Um, um, I offer my services free of charge. I just need water, and that that's not something that we have. We well, no, it is something we have to respect. Power wash the people that answer. built this town. And not those that are trying to move the town. Well, I'm offering my services right. free of charge for anyone that wants their family's uh, 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 cemetery lot power washed All right. and clean it up. I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to know. How are we doing with uh, digitalizing the records? I mean, it's something that we started the process for two years ago, maybe three. Um, How about last year? Last year, we started it. Okay. Um, is, is there any movement towards that? Is there is there a time where we say another two years? It's kind of winter work. Okay. And we're preparing to start working on it. And we just we've been talking to. Um, the ladies here, they said that there is a computer that we would be able to, to use if we came in and scheduled some time and, and get to work on it. Because okay. we originally had a computer on mm -hmm. this list so that we would be able to, to yeah. move forward. But we've acquired the program, so let's fill up the data. Yeah, we bought the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we just need to have the time to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not that we haven't started it. 
All right, well, um, there's a lot of complications in it. Oh, I'm sure there are. That's a puzzle. One, one record leads to several complications. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for this, and we'll... Um, so, we'll, we'll just you. wait to hear from you. Yes. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for your um, patience and persistence. So, uh, other cemetery quickies here. Yep. Um, we have... We, we just had a meeting, and we, we have another one scheduled for what? Next later, week. Next week. Um, and we have, we have a list of topics that we need to address and, and make some updates to and including the rules and regulations and uh, cemetery lot prices um, I'm not sure if we have to get town selectman's approval for either of those approving our rules and regulations or setting new I, I prices probably the fees you would we'd have to we'd have to raise those as a board I think but as far as your rules and regulations, I think we'd also have to approve those too, but you guys could write them easy enough, I mean, and we would just approve them. I think that was our plan, was that we, yeah. would, we would do the work and then present it to you yeah. at a meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then we'd just approve them as, because at your request and then go from but there. But the cemetery board is also a little different than other boards. Right. A sure. cemetery, it's a commission, correct? Cemetery commission? Yep. Right. So it has a lot more it's not latitude. A or a board. But we would, we before we did anything, we would be bringing it for approval. Right. We just have to check what the laws are to make sure that what we're doing is right, and that's about it. If we have to be involved, we'll be involved. But if we don't, well, we would like you involved. Well, but if, if we don't have to, and you guys can set your own prices, that's and not have to go through the board, that's fine too. Whatever the rules are. Find that out pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I have. That'll cover it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We have. Um, Announcing that the um, town office will be closed Wednesday, December 6th to attend the so NIMRIC training. So I can get Just so you. people know. And um, I believe Angus McCusker was going to show up for a letter of support, and um, I don't see him yet. So why don't we go on to the appointment for the planning and zoning committee? So. Sandy, you have a um, likely um, suspect for that? We do, I, um, and uh, uh, Mary Pratini uh, said that she was interested, and I believe you have, again, you have a letter from uh, uh, Dan McKinley. Uh, we, we would ask that she be appointed to, yep. for, to fill the vacancy that we have right now. Mary Fratini. Well, I'd be lucky to have her. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I would move to appoint uh, Mary Fertini to uh, um, the empty seat on the Planning Commission. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Do you send her a letter or something? Um, we could. Or, uh, or at least an email. Um, yeah. Uh, I have her email, so if you... If you okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't okay. see it on this letter, but yeah. Okay. You got a note for that. I make a comment, please. Sure. What? Yeah. Martha Slater, as gracious as she is, been waving her hand during the last two conversations, and no one has has addressed her. I'm trying to get her facts in, and I'm very concerned about it. But things are being passed, and Martha's waving her hand. And uh, she's not getting a response. All right. Well, let's, Why is that? let's ask her. Martha, have you got a question out there? Actually, I did have a question, but it, you said it out loud again. I couldn't hear who, the name of the person that you were planning to appoint when it was said from the floor. But then when you said Mary Frattini, I figured that out. Obviously, I could hear that. I couldn't, I didn't, okay. you know, I couldn't hear her name at first. 
And uh, I had had a question before um, about uh, the, the item above it. Um, what, what does VOREC stand for? But you haven't just, you're, you're not addressing that right now because you're waiting for right. uh, if, if he comes tonight. He, he did just walk in the door, so that answer will be questioned directly. Okay, so he'll explain to me what that what yep. that is for yep. VOM Reese. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> and who what, and who is that that just came in? I'm sorry. That's um, Angus McCusker. Angus. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. I'll meet, meet myself again. Okay. Um, good timing, Angus. You're on. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, as you guys know, the Belmont Trail, um, the town did a planning grant uh, funded by CDBG funds um, a couple of years, 2000. 17 time flies um, and very thankful for that grant opportunity that was sixty thousand dollar grant um, they're planning for Belmont trail connectivity um, between Pittsfield and our neighboring community in Randolph um, so today we have about 90% uh, completed between the range up there around Chester Mountain all the way to Pittsfield um, right there uh, the hut the hostel here in the town community um, and we're working towards another uh, BOREC grant application for trail construction funding from the top of the range headed down to Randolph. Um, and so the idea is that um, Randolph applied for the grant last year, only got partial funding, BOREC funding for uh, master planning, trail signage and wayfinding. Um, so the master planning for the entire state. So the planning grant that we got was more regional. Um, so. There's a lot of interest, excitement. People want to see this happen across the state, um, connectivity, so we're working towards that right now. Um, and so this grant application, so I'm here tonight to ask the town select board uh, for a uh, letter of support uh, for this grant application um, that Belmont Trail Collective will be applying for, um, and town of Randolph supporting this as well, select board, uh, Braintree select board in Rochester. So we're asking for BOREC funds for trail construction, um, about 9.8 miles total. Um, about half of that is new trail, and the other half is existing trail improvements. Um, Most of the existing trail um, is over in Randolph area. And um, so yeah, so that's the idea. We're asking for funds for that, um, as well as um, some signage kiosks. Um, so people know where the trail is, um, signage proper for that. Um, yeah, and that's more or less the summary of what I'm here for is just to get a letter of support. Um, and, and this is a, a letter of support for a, a, it's an application from the Randolph um, division. Yeah, we're going to actually I have a modified version of it. We're going to have the Belmont Trail Collective be the applicant. Um, in the past, BOREC grants were only for um, town municipalities to apply for. But um, as of this year, BOREC is allowing nonprofits to apply. Um, so, given uh, you know Braintree, Rochester, Randolph, all the towns that have trail segments in them, we just figured you know we'll help Elma Trail Collective apply with support from all the town partnering towns. So, yeah. I have a question. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. This is directed to Angus. Robert Franks, Angus, how are you? What's the question? Yes, how are you? He's asking. How what? How, how, how are you? My, my, how are we? My are question what? is, you are I'm good. Yeah. You're applying <laughs> for the grant. Uh, Kristen, I would suggest that you don't laugh. Uh, I'm asking Angus, what application of grant? is going to support this uh, situation in Randolph. What, is it Two Rivers out of Queechee? Yes, I'm not sure I can hear I heard you mention Two Rivers. Um, I do want to add, I'm glad you mentioned them because um, we are likely going to use them as a grant administrator. Um, but we have to um, make sure the procurement policy allows for that. Um, so we'll see. So how about if uh, Two Rivers Out of Queechee denies your grant, where do you go next? Um, the taxpayers? I don't think that he, the grant is, he's not applying to Two Rivers for, for the funding. 
the funding is, where is the funding come? That's the... Um, um, it's the State Bull Rec, Vermont Outdoor Vermont, Recreation Economic Collaborative. Yeah, it's the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Collaborative. It's a, it's a state department that has the funding for this that they're applying to, not, not Two Rivers. Two Rivers, he's saying they would um, look to them for help administering the grant. Writing the grant. So who is the head of the... Uh, the the the, uh, the state department or the person who puts forth the money from the taxpayers. Yeah, I think I believe uh, Vermont um, FPR Forest Park Recreation is the one who's um, coordinating the grant. Um, their staff. Um, yeah. I Did think you I'll could you hear that, Robert? He's saying the Vermont Department of Forest and Recreation, Forest and Parks, oh, Forest and Parks. Thank you, because I didn't hear that, and Martha may have not either. Yeah. But that's a very important fact. That's taxpayers' money. Yep. Um, we can't. We 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 as a town. We we as a a, a, a two towns, Bethel and Rochester, can't support our roads that are in disgrace, and we're building bike trails on the hilltops and the ridges. So priorities have to be put forth. Yeah, this this money is not um, coming from the towns, actually. Or transportation. Yeah, it's a state. They have six million for recreation, outdoor recreation. Yeah. Um, it's an opportunity. We could not apply, but it's an opportunity. You know, um, utilize that money for our community connectivity. Um, I will say that the trail that we are constructing um, is a pretty modern, sustainable trail. Um, during the last floods that we had this summer, um, we only had one significant um, spot on a trail, uh, rock hardening through a little brook, um, we were able to fix that. Um, but, you know, compared that to other trails, significant damage, so we were very fortunate and I have to give credit to the trail builders and the sustainable standard that we're following for that trail. Um, and the opportunity that we created for the uh, youth, uh, we have after school bike programs, um, you know, the high school, middle school clawing, closing down. There's now an opportunity for after school books by programs. You don't have to have a number of kids for a team. You can just have two, three kids, up to 20 kids. Um, and then we also have a local club, Ridgeline Outdoor Collective, that um, does like a mountain bike race team. Um, and they have been utilizing these trails um, regularly. So it's been really great to see kids out there using them. Um, also the trail is uh, for adaptive. Um, so um, folks who can't, um, get around, um, you know, we have special bikes, um, adaptive bikes, and uh, we've been doing adaptive assessments and um, for a large portion of all the trails um, have been suitable for adaptive riders, which has been pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. I would like to make a comment. All right. Would you mind if I do so? Uh, yeah, can you just um, get to, to the point here? Yep. Uh, the point is the conflict of interest. And it's something that all town taxpayers should pay attention to. There's a conflict of interest here in a big way. And no matter how you uh, connotate the, uh, uh, the admission of Ridgeline, it's... Hello? Hmm. I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. His computer is still on mute and his phone, I think his phone maybe must have died or whatever. He just left as a participant, so. Yeah. He can hear us still on his computer, I'm sure, but he's muted there. Okay. Well, if, his, if you can still hear us, Robert, if your concern of a conflict of interest is the fact that I own a bike shop. I will not vote in this decision. I'll leave this to Pat and Frank. Nor have you ever. Yeah. <laughs> You've always walked away from it. Yeah. So I guess um, I'll, I'll hand this off to, to you then to continue yeah, on with that. I don't see that we have any issues. But, uh, and Robert, if you want to call back in, I'll let you back in when I see you in the waiting room. This one. 
Is it just copies? This one's still good, right? Yeah, this one has a date change. It's the same as okay. last time, 2021, I believe. Yep. You guys were sort of letter support so for our last application. Um, this one just changed instead of Tom Randall. It's still more show up. Yeah. 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 This is so. So, I'm going to want to approve it first. Go ahead, Pat. That's the other one. I don't know, but would it be a conflict of interest if I um, approve spending money on the roads? Because people could use those roads to get to my store. <laughs> what, do, I don't know. We probably should vote on this and say we're going to approve the letter. The letter of support. Sign, 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 uh, letter of support. I second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. There we go. Thanks for taking that over, you guys. Is yeah. Enough? Well, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, we do too. We appreciate all your work. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really positive. Here. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Makes them smile like that. He went out there and worked um, to get that money, though. I guess when you guys started, she signed that. I didn't even laugh. It was that. a smile. Oh. No. Yeah, yeah you, when you guys signed that. I signed the one you have. Oh, you signed the one you have. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um... Next on the agenda, we have uh, approval for application for time extension and funding addition to the DCDP CDS planning grant. Vic, yes. take it away. Thank you. I'm here uh, representing the uh, high school repurposing committee to recommend that the town <coughs> apply for a time extension and additional funding to the planning grant that was uh, originally. Uh, granted in 2021. Um, and uh, the work has progressed. We have some more work to do in terms of finishing up work that's underway. Plus, we have the opportunity to apply for up to $10,000 of additional funds. We, you may recall we were approved for $50,000. And so uh, there is uh, some tasks that could be done with those additional funds coming from the same source. This is not town funding or match funding or anything like that. And uh, what we would propose is that the same architect that consulted with us in the feasibility study be retained to document the high school interior. Uh, they sent a letter with a proposed, and I could just read it, uh, it's brief, to describe the work that would be done uh, and first of all, um, it, oh, if the project proceeds to uh, be funded, that is, uh, the high school renovation project proceeds to be funded and undertaken, there would need to be a full architectural design work done and then renovation and, and all that comes after. So, under, so that's why the, uh, the uh, consulting architect uh, prefaced his recommendation with this comment. Understanding that the proposed Rochester uh, project will require Going through a formal RFP for full scope services, we propose the following scope of work to get the project ready for a full service scope. So what they're recommending is something that would need to be done by anybody, any architect firm, um, and it would have value as a standalone project. So it's review of the existing high school design documents and field verify existing building conditions, drop as built documents in electronic format utilizing Revit, which is a program for the format. Since the documents will be in Revit, uh, the drawings will include floor plans, elevations, and a 3D model. These documents can then be shared and utilized by the final selected design team for work going forward with the project. Proposed doing the above scope of work for a lump sum fee of $10,000. The work from us will start in late December and we intend to complete it in one month. Uh, we, this is a great potential project for the community. I hope the proposed scope of work will help set the final design team to uh, move forward in an efficient manner. Um, signed by Greg Dawson, too, is the architect uh, from GDA Associates in, in Montpelier, who's been consulting on this project. So, um, uh, as I mentioned, when we received the initial planning grant, there was discussion of a possibility of additional $10,000 at the time. In more recent conversations uh, with uh, Nathan Cleveland from the uh, Community Development Agency and, and other staff, uh, they're very supportive of the notion that uh, we apply for and would likely look favorably upon uh, an application uh, of this type for continued planning for this project. 
Um, and also point out, uh, Sarah Wright, another hat that Sarah wears is she's the plan, she's the administrator for this grant. So uh, she may have comments to add to this as well. Uh, in terms of, so that's the, the additional funds we're recommending the town apply for. And then we're also recommending a time extension. The, the deadline for completing all the work and reporting out for the existing grant is the end of this calendar year, which is coming up fast. There's still some final reporting work that needs to be done with respect to the environmental work that's been done. And then if we add this architectural work, we'll need some additional time too. And then there'll have to be a public hearing as we get towards the very end. That'll need to be warned. So we're asking for up to additional six months uh, beyond December 31. Um, so those are the two key elements of the recommended application. $10,000 for the architectural uh, as-built study and up to six months additional time frame. And um, I don't have paperwork in hand, but we'll we'll get that to you as need be. Is there anything, Maria? One quick thing too. So at the moment, you have I think about four four grand remaining from your existing um, project, and we had also talked about how if the um, if you do in fact get approved for an extension, a cost and a time extension, um, that's going to mean extra admin work for Two Rivers. So we're requesting eight hundred dollars to cover the additional six hundred months. Or excuse, excuse me, just <laughs> stop it. My brain this time of day. Um, six months of work for administering, and then all the close-up procedures that you just described, Vic. Um, and then the committee had also asked for Two Rivers assistance with NEPA environmental review. Yes. all the paperwork that comes with that. And so um, we would request um, $2,545 for NEPA technical assistance. We have a formal proposal that we're, we would submit along to the select board and then also with the application to the state. Um, but I just wanted to add that in there. And if, if the extension was granted, um, we would request select board's approval to amend the current contract that we have with the town to provide administrative services and then to add this new task which would be to um, provide NEPA environmental review services. And, and all of that work would be covered within the $50,000 initial grant plus the $10,000 extension right. if we get yeah. it. So we're not asking for any money from the town for this. The town has already well exceeded the match required for this, yeah. for this project. The volunteer team has been amazing. So who's going to write the application? May I make you comments? <laughs> that would be me. Right. Yeah. That's how you earn your money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it something that I need to do to it um, to request that the CDBG grant to be extended? Um, no. My understanding, I've talked with Nate Cleveland a little bit and that he would sort of, I have access to the GEARS application, and so he would walk me through all the steps to actually okay. submit the request. Okay. Um, I think what we're looking for this evening is just formal approval from the select board to make that request so okay. that we can have that in the meeting minutes and then attach that to the application of the town. Does it need to be in writing? If, as long as it's in the meeting I'd like minutes. to make a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, and can you, um, okay, just, um, Let's keep track of where we were just about to finish, but go go ahead, Robert. There's a great sign, and this is in total respect for Sarah. It was, it's wonderful. And I, there was a sign that said, information, a dollar. Information you need, a hundred dollars. Sarah has fulfilled her obligation to cure the person that pays a dollar or a hundred dollars for the information you need. So it, the sign was information, a dollar. Information you need, one hundred dollars. And Sarah is, she's absolutely wonderful. And uh, lastly, I want to put kudos out to Cooter and Dana for doing a wonderful job plowing the roads today with an unexpected snowstorm and all the <laughs> Yep, and don't forget Teddy. And Teddy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Teddy, he's a great guy. Yeah. All right. And, thank you, you, Robert. And Dune, you have you have a great crew. We do. And I, I, I wave to them, stop by their sides every day. Thank you. So we're going. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to turn the conversation back around to where we were um, with the um, approval for this application, and 
I would move that. Well, dude, well, Robert, dude, let's, let's, I want, I want we, were, we were right in the middle of a task, and, no, and no, no, afterwards no. we'll no, have some this open... Is a public meeting. Yes, and we'll have public comment. We're almost at public comment here. Yeah, we're, we'll, we'll get to that point, but we're, um, we want to finish this. So I would move to approve the application Spongy for the extension. I second that. In yeah. addition. In addition. In, it, extension in, of time it, and additional funds. Extension of time and additional funds. I second that. Planning. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you there. for explaining all that. Sure. Yeah, thank um, you. And if I, mean, I can be of any help, let me know. Absolutely. Um, I wonder if we might also get a motion to um, to revise the um, contract with Two Rivers should the extension be approved by the state. That would be helpful for us. I office. would move that. Should these extensions be approved, we can I think that goes along with what we just approved. the contract with Two Rivers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Just to keep us um, yeah. crossing our T's and dotting our I's. Thank you. All right. Um, don't have anyone here from the library. Oh, Sandy, have you got a public well, comment? No, I was just. I just want to make sure that we don't that you don't adjourn before you go back to the plan. Yeah, we have an approval. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll put that on that. Yeah, good. Good point. Yeah, we jumped right on into all these other exciting stuff. Um, so speaking of the plan, since we were just talking about bylaws, draft zoning bylaws. Do we um, feel? I did want to add one thing in reference to the neighborhood designation area. So um, I'm not as familiar with that program. It's new. I don't think we've done. I think we've done one in our region, and that was for Randolph, and we were sort of peripherally involved. I was taking a look at the requirements for bylaws for the NDA. They are very specific. I don't know if you've taken a look at them, um, but there's certainly something that Planning Commission would want to take a look at. Um, I don't know that the zoning bylaw would meet all of those requirements. There's nothing in it that has like a prohibition that would, you know, disallow you from getting an NDA. However, there are a number of requirements in the a NDA, such as Ensure that garage doors are not the dominant element of a front facade. For example, you would prohibit a garage door from facing the street or requiring it to be set back from the front wall of the building. The zoning does not go into that level of detail, right? Um, and there might be some revisions that you would want to make to your, excuse, to your subdivision regulations, which could meet some of these requirements. Um, or you might need to open up your zoning bylaw again and to talk through these very specific requirements that are only relevant to the neighborhood designation area. Um, I wanted to put that out there because you should so, be aware of that. I don't know if it's worth holding up the whole process of adopting a bylaw just for those things, but I wanted to make you aware of that. And Sandy, I don't know if you've, if Planning Commission has taken a look at those very no, specific not. requirements. I think yeah. it's something that Planning Commission would have to discuss in great detail. Yeah. And, and, so, and sounds a little restrictive if you're going to do that. You know, like say you can't have a garage door facing the street or something. Sounds a little weird. Usually cars are on the street, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> but, but, um, I think but have to look is there, it. let me put it this way, is there any pressing need to pass this, um, this zoning bylaws immediately? Is there anything hinging upon them being passed? Can yes. we? Yes. yes. So our, our, we, we, lose, we, lose our, we lose our state money. Oh. Yeah, this year. oh, well. Two Rivers does, yeah. Well, there's a significant financial yeah. impact to Two Rivers. And also, if we amend it, we have to have hearings again. Mm -hmm. So we don't yes. have the time. Yes. I should also note, too, that, um, and Kevin educated on me, this is a very strange provision of st state law that have a lot, raises more questions than it gives answers. But technically, once you warn a select board hearing for a draft zoning bylaw, that bylaw will take effect 150 days from the date of the select board hearings warning, um, which is bizarre because then you've basically got two bylaws operating at the same time, right? State law is very strange that way, and we've argued with them, and it's it's very confusing. Um, but I just want to make you aware of that too. That for clarity's sake, it would help to adopt a new bylaw so that you're not working with two sets of regulations that are okay. conflicting. Mm -hmm. And if we indeed find that. We need to then come back and 
We can right. amend it. Amend it. Or you exactly, you can amend it. Do that process, which... Um, okay, no fear. <coughs> you can catch yeah, up to us. You know, all, all of this <coughs> neighborhood designation stuff, there's a whole new page that I found on the state website. Right. Um, and and what, whether it's going to be really difficult or not, you know, it, it's... From my understanding, everything is subject to the permissions and the going through the applications. So, I mean, it's worth a shot to attempt it at least, right? Um, so that people feel that we're they were heard and we're listening to them, and you know the the, the any kind of development that's going to go on in this in the town in this area is not going to be in the designated village. Uh, you know, most likely it's going to be further out, so. And, right, so that application process, in order to apply, you'll have to demonstrate that your bylaws have met all of these very strict requirements. So it sounds like even before you apply, you can have, you can start the conversation with the state and say, where do you think we're at in terms of compliance with these many regulations? Um, and then, then it would be a conversation with the planning commission and the town as a whole to figure out, like, well, is this something we really want to commit to, given that this is what the state is asking us to do in order to get that designation? Okay. okay. So that said, I would move to approve the um, Rochester zoning bylaws as presented. The draft. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. There you have it. Thank you for that reminder, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> we would have gone home. <laughs> no, we you were probably about ready to say the same thing. <laughs> I was very grateful to Sandy. <laughs> there was a few of us sitting there. Yeah, yeah. um, Where are we? Um, <laughs> library. Anything from? Nobody's here from the library. Um, highway department. We thank you, Robert, for thanking the crew. Yes, we do thank them. We we are down a truck right now. I don't know how bad the damage is or what. Um, transmission issue and so we'll have to figure that out going forward yeah. but they're doing what they have to do which one uh, the 550 transmission again so I don't know what how serious yet we'll probably know tomorrow and then we'll have to make some sort of decision talk it over with John and see what we what direction we need to look at Go from there. Yeah. Don't have any. Um, Terry's not here to talk about utilities. Uh, is Jeff Kephart online? Yes, he is. Hey, Jeff. Good evening. Good evening. Not much to report. Um, we're still waiting to hear on the uh, MERP um, grant application, and uh, I'll have uh, some some additional information. Um, about a potential collaboration um, in our in your next meeting, and we'll be getting you some information uh, uh, before that meeting as well. Uh, I'd also just point out that the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee participated with uh, Randolph and Bethel, and it's called the Window Dressers uh, Community Build. Um, Window Dressers is a nonprofit in in. Uh, Maine that has been helping New England states uh, develop a, a utilize their system to build interior storm inserts um, at a very low cost, and I think it was 249 window units that we built over the 10 days of the activity in Bethel um, for 39 individual families. Um, a third of them are low income and. Uh, um, and, and, and didn't have to pay uh, for their inserts at all. Um, but I'll have more information both, both on that and then an upcoming proposal from surrounding communities uh, to uh, collaborate further. Great. Thanks again for um, your persistence and, and um, keeping your thumb on in the dike of the energy leakage. I said it. Yeah. Um, and excuse me, can I ask one? Oh, sure. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I had kind of a fuzzy connection tonight, and I didn't quite hear um, two things that Jeff said. 
Um, you said you were talking about a MERP grant. Is that like capital M, capital ERP? Yes, it's an acronym. Um, okay. And now, let's see, Municipal Energy Resilience, Resilience Program, I believe. Yeah. Energy Resilience Program. Okay. And you said the Valley Action Something Committee participated in the window bill. What was the name of the committee? I didn't get the whole thing. I'm sorry. Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee. Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee. Thank you very much. No problem. More to come. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen, anything exciting in the world of grants? Um, not exciting, but um, all of my FEMA stuff that I added to the portal um, was corrupted for some reason when they renamed all of my files. Um, so I've been resubmitting all of our storm, our last storm stuff um, directly to Carlos right now. I'm not using their portal anymore. Um, and also, um, I've been working a lot lately on submitting for the West Hill Bridge reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely quite a process. So yeah. yep. I'm getting bounced around quite a bit and having to go to one person and to another and then back again. And But we're doing it, so yep. figuring it out. Great. Cool. Now we have room for public comment. Anybody? On Zoom, we're in the room. Zoom looks to be happy. Going once. Just nope. one thing about ARPA, just a reminder that funds need to be obligated by um, December 31st, 2024. And I know we've had some discussions about like strategies you can take to we, convert it from now. federal to local character. Are you all good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. If you yeah. have any questions, any concerns about meeting the deadline, please don't hesitate to give me a call and we'll walk through stuff. Thank you. So we'll we're double gonna... check with our masters. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. It's going to be spent. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. All right, then um, with that said, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Martha, did you have something? I saw a quick wave. You're muted. You're muted. It's all good. Uh, at the bottom of your agenda, it says you're going into an executive session now to do an employee salary discussion. Is that true? Yes. It's on the agenda. Yes. It's on the okay, agenda. Okay, fine. Yeah. I just, yep. I just you would include that at the end of my article, that's all. I just yeah. want to make sure. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, thank you. Am I good to close now? Yeah.